It's the Batman. It's I saw I saw quite going to this movie saying it's the best comic book movie ever. I I thought I don't know what how to take that. But anyway, I went and saw it. So did you. What's your thoughts? So, you know, I heard the same thing. I was like, yo, best comic book movie ever. And I'm like, ah, okay, I'm not going to give it that, but it is a very good movie. And I do appreciate the nuances because I remember, I, I, I only read part of year two, uh, a little bit of year two comics, Batman, but I watched the animated movie year two. And I love the fact of, I, I thought Robert Patterson actually played it a lot better than I expected. Uh, it was a little emo at times, but it made sense yeah, yeah, yeah. because he still was trying to figure out how to be Batman and Bruce Wayne. And at that time, he was just like, F Bruce Wayne, I'm Batman. So I yeah, love yeah. the way that they set it up. This was one of those where um, I, I still felt the good rise like I did from the Batman Begins Dark Knight series. But I actually felt the intensity that I felt from uh, the last half. Uh, the last Batman part, sort of, of uh, Batman v Superman, where, you know, you, you got the fight scene and you're just like, this is the Batman I believe in. Like, this is what I felt with this one. I was like, yo, this is a Batman. He's not refined. He still is really, really raw. And you can see the rawness. But yeah. it felt like Batman. And yeah. people talk about how dark it was. I didn't feel it was any significantly darker than any other movie. But I felt like it it, it utilized the darkness better like mm. it made slow motion not annoying like a Zack Snyder movie typically does you know yeah yeah the one movie the, the most probably influential modern noir movie that really burrows from is seven and seven because number one of the structure of the story which is someone is killing to make a moral point right, right. someone is killing to make a moral point now this 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 movie comes from a long Halloween um, and I don't know when Long Halloween was published, whether it was influenced by Seven. I suspect it probably was because it's just so close to that idea. Right. Um, it, without it being the without it being connected to the Seven Deadly Scenes, it's just into the yeah. And, and that's something that we've seen in, in other instances. But yeah, yeah. I, think, I guess Seven is the original that... iteration or Along Came a Spider, one of those two. Yeah, there was. There's a couple more that followed seven. Like, I'm pretty sure they followed seven. Seven, there might have been a couple before, and there might have been a couple. But seven was the one that just burst that one right open. This whole idea yeah. of m morality killing, the whole idea then that at the two third mark, the baddie gives himself up. Just you remember in, in seven, he just walks in with blood covered into his head, and in this one. Yeah. He again gives himself up at the two third mark, and just basically does it. And then he's got that real. When we do see him, he's got that real John Doe look. If you remember John Doe, it's incredible to say it now. Kevin Spacey wasn't a huge actor right. when he came out and played. You know, so he's supposed to be the average man, and so does Ed, whatever his name, and Magnesium. <laughs> Magnesium. He looks like an everyday man as well. That was unusual suspects. That was was with Kevin Spacey. No, Kevin Spacey played both of them. He played. He was John Doe mm -hmm. in right. Seven, in, and he right. was also Kaiser Soze. Because in those right. days, he was just a he was a breakthrough actor. He 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 wasn't. Dis he became later very distinctive. Unfortunately, later on for all the wrong reasons. But uh, so he, did. He, he dick. <laughs> <laughs> but Paul Dano also kind of played that average Joe kind yeah. of look. So for me, I picked up on this maybe even before, and I probably heard it even before going to the cinema, but watching the movie, it had that seven feel to it. It had that, you know, almost as if um, Gordon was, you know, Gordon was Morgan Freeman's character. Yeah. Um, all this stuff was happening. And so I, I guess towards the end of the film, towards that last third, I was thinking... We're going to see something big here. We're going to yeah. see something big. We're going to get something that's going to blow us out the back. We're going to see a head in a box. We're going to see something re because that's several times during the movie they said this is huge, right? Remember, yeah. this is big. This is going to break open the whole city. And when it came, which is the shooting of Falcone, which is in as far as the plot's concerned, that's yeah. what it was all about. Even though later yeah. on there was this 
the, interesting the third act. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, kind of reminiscent of uh, uh, of the uh, Katrina, of Hurricane Katrina in New yeah, Orleans. Yeah, yeah. But I, I guess this movie to me is really, really well made. Right, yeah. acting is is great. Um, particularly, I agree with you, Robin Hanson. I think he was great. He was really vulnerable. He had that really confused feel about him. But I just didn't have the head in the box moment. <laughs> yeah. I wanted something to go. Ha, ha. Yeah, I wanted you know something crazy to happen, and it, you know it was. No, it didn't happen like that. You know the thing is, I think they tried to emphasize or, or tried to create the element of the head in the box moment with Alfred getting exploded, uh, kind of thing from the uh, initially whenever the uh, Riddler sent the package to Bruce Wayne and yeah, yeah. Alfred opened it up, and I think we were going to get it, but I think like uh, because they are limited, you, you're you're kind of constrained to the fact that you can't kill Alfred, like you you can't. There's there's yeah, only yeah. one real head in the box moment that could have ever happened, and it would have been killing Alfred. And you can't do that. They can only get it close, but you can't go go into that. Not, not at this point. Not this early. No, not at this point. You're right. You're right. Yeah. And, but and, I think, and, oh, don't no, say what you're gonna say. Yeah, I mean, I think getting to those smaller characters too. Now I'm, I'm gonna get really nitpicky here, but it's you know it's always, it's a testament to how good the movie is that you have to get nitpicky, right? I just okay, I just. Before you get to that point, let me just finish this one line. Cause I know yeah, you're going to go into somebody. You don't want to switch it out from here. The only thing that I, I I was a little disappointed with was that they created this Dory character that was like the administrative assistant to Alfred, and like that would have been the head in the box moment if they just gave us a little bit more of her, and then been like, because yeah. she's not a normal person. She's not a person made her at all, really, in the comics. So. And or even in the Batman lore. So to at least have her be there and then kind of give us a little bit of character development in it so that we could see her interaction as to just Bruce Wayne as a person who doesn't know more than than the moment and then let that be the person with the head in the box. So it's someone that's still close to Bruce, but not, you know, not one that we actually are like, yo, it's going to mess up his, uh, yeah, yeah. his entire history and lore and how he develops. Yeah, yeah. And the, to use another head in the box and maybe a, a, a movie closer to our time and closer to this genre um, was um, a couple of moments in the Joker, um, Joker right. where we were just petrified of what was happening on screen. And I'm thinking about two, two moments where it just really jumps out in that movie. Number one is... The bit where we see Joker kill that guy, and then we see the little dwarf guy begging for his life. Right. Like you're sitting there going, Oh God, like, is he going to? And the guy was crying, he says, You think, Is he going to do that? Like, is he going to do that? We don't know what this guy's capable of. That was a moment for me in that where I was just going, Oh, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I'm on, on shaky ground here. This is getting very morally ambiguous. And then, of course, when he. Later on, when he actually shoots Robert De Niro's character, the comedian on thing, that's like, oh, <laughs> like I thought he was, oh, shit, I wanted him to kill the other two as well. But they are moments that just blew the back door off the, you know, the cinema. I don't know how it was when you watched it, but it was like, oh my gosh, here he goes. Oh, yeah. and that was, and you probably can go through a lot of these, you know, these other movies and think of moments where you just went, oh crap, oh crap, and just something he delivers or he just, they tease us. Um, right. and this one just didn't to me have that. I, I guess no. Selena Kyle, Selena Kyle finding out that, uh, Cal, um, what was this? Falcone About was being her father and father. I mean, that was an interesting thing, but it didn't blow my head, didn't blow my Again, mind. There wasn't enough, it wasn't enough build up for that, and it didn't connect to what was the preeminent, uh, yeah, preeminent plot of the movie. Yeah, it was, it was but it was plot. just. It was just interesting. Yeah. Um, if 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 Falcone had killed her, that would have been like, oh shit. But again, you're right. In the same thing with, in in the larger scheme of things, if this is going to be kind of this own little world, this is going to be Reeves's Dark Knight trilogy, so to speak. Well, yeah. you can't kill those characters off. Um, and maybe if it is part of a huge trilogy, maybe you can't. You know, you can't have a huge moment in this film like that. Um, 
At least not without replacing it with something else. Because, again, when it comes to the Batman lore, you have to, there is a certain pattern that has to be hit. And there's a certain element that goes to Batman being in existence, which is there has to be a support to what creates a balance between him and Bruce Wayne, Batman and Bruce Wayne, which is that Alfred element, or there's the uh, lock into the romantic, which I'm glad they developed that. I mean, I got to give credit. Like Zoe Kravitz was way better of a Catwoman than I expected her to be. I had a very low expectation for what she would be. Oh, okay. And and I I thought she actually did a more a far superior job than what I expected. And again, after I just watched the uh, the long Halloween night uh, part one and two for the animated movie uh, just recently, maybe about two weeks ago, uh, to see that same element work despite not having you know all the characters. And obviously, that one was more focused to Two Face than it was to Riddler. But it was just like. It, it, it gave an authenticity to the character of Catwoman, who is always supposed to be uh, almost similar to what Elektra was for Daredevil. Ambiguously uh-huh. evil or, or benevolently, uh, benevolently evil or ambiguously good, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yep, 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 for sure. Yeah, I thought, I, I wanted her to, I thought her, first of all, I think her, Andy Serkis, and Jeffrey Wright played their characters. Excellent. Excellent. Like you said, I, what, I wanted. I just what I just thought the character were drawn up to be very generic versions of those characters. I thought they were very. I didn't see. You know, I thought Andy Circus was going to maybe. I think you, you, when we did the Bat Family, you talked about Alfred being kicking ass, and yeah, him being you know Secret Service guy. And I was thinking, are we going to see this Alfred? Not here, right? Granted, mm-hmm. maybe down the track. Not right. here. Uh, we get, we see Bat, we see Zoe Kravitz struggling a little bit. We see her struggling a little bit. Could we have seen her do something a little bit crazier? I would have been there for that. And Jeffrey Wright's car, I don't know. I don't know what you do with Gordon. I don't know if there's, I think he's kind I, of set in stone. I think that's the thing, like, with, because with Gordon, because we've gotten it from Gotham and we've seen him some of these other individual ones where we see Gordon as he's developing as an early stage. Like, I feel like, Jeffrey Wright's Gordon was a little bit scruffier than what he should have been. He was still like new, like he wasn't, you know, just entering into the force new like he was, but like that Lieutenant, he shouldn't have been so disheveled, I guess. He's just seen a lot more Murtaugh when he should have been uh, whoever meld uh, a little, a little bit more reckless, I guess to say a little bit more, uh, Gung Ho, which was one of the reasons why he was able to become a commissioner at some point in time, uh, right. after a period of time, because he just pushed the belt. And also, it's because of that is eventually his own daughter getting shot and after being Batgirl and then becoming um, uh, uh, Oracle and all that stuff. But like, I, I, I did feel like they were really trying to push the new war component, and I within the genre of uh, new war uh, of of uh, of what detective noir kind of yeah. filming i get why they did that with gordon's character like yeah, there's right. always that disgruntled private eye or that the batman is a classic private eye with the uh, disgruntled but hopeful uh sergeant lieutenant captain detective who is into crime scene and just needs a second eye and so he has to play the straight man who's just constantly being inundated by this new perspective as opposed to um, being in and of himself a character that that mm. does for self, it's it's the yeah. buddy cop syndrome. So I I understood it, but I'm like with you. It, it seemed like they downplayed everything, but because of the yeah. genre they were playing to, I understood. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you think of uh, What do you think of Paul Dano's Riddler? You know what? I one I thought he was Paul Paul Thomas Anderson at first. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Thomas Anderson is the director. <laughs> I literally always get Deno and, and him mix up. But a- anyway, I did. I actually, it wasn't what I was expecting for Riddler, but it was what I actually appreciated because the Riddler is such a character that is an intelligence guy, you know. But in all the instances that we've seen the Riddler play out, he either gets played out like Joker Part Two, or he gets kind of like what Jim Carrey did which I guess was Joker yeah, yeah. part two. Or you get kind of just like, 
this guy in a suit that just is kind of a clown, but he's like it really is just end up being Joker part two, but he's not. Like I love the right. fact that they use him as a legit serial killer and less of a agent of chaos. Uh, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and so it made more sense to me. And whenever we saw him and way Dano knows how to portray, get his face contorted and and just the way the smile just was the right amount of creepy and unsettling yeah. and. You know, when he was inside Ar- Arkham, he's, you know, the way he's, like, talking, he's like, no, no. It's like that right amount of, like, yo, you're about to swine. <laughs> Even if it like, when we, we were like, oh, wait, does he know that Bruce Batman is Bruce Wayne? But, and then the realization that he doesn't know, but we still aren't 100% sure. Oh, I thought he, he was busted for sure. I thought, you're done. <laughs> I thought, you're done, Brucey. He's gone. And then no. he says... Too bad we didn't get him, but we'll get him next time. And there's like, yeah, I can feel the relief, oh, exactly. like coming across him. Um, Look, there is nobody, but I, I have to give one credit. There's nobody who played their part as an actor becoming their character more than Colin Farrell. Hands down. Right, so you liked you liked the old penguin. I liked Colin Farrell's depiction of Tim Burton's. Uh, Tim Burton's uh, what's his name? Tim Burton's Penguin. What's his name? The character, the actor, uh, Danny DeVito. Danny DeVito. That was the like I know for a fact. Colin Farrell was listening and to uh, it's always sunny in Philadelphia and uh, back in the Tim Burton one because he felt he had the pitch tone of the Bostonian uh, uh, middle lower class rich, you know that, but the look was better the the expressions i'm like yeah yeah that is commitment that man that man put on real weight <laughs> to be in this yeah no, that, that, that is that was a that i could barely recognize colin farrell and that to be i don't know if i could recognize him at all um but, if i didn't know it was colin farrell beforehand i never would have even guessed it was colin farrell but he, he does a good job of establishing who he is with giving himself lots of room to grow into something more yeah. um you can that's um, and I, I, I was impressed with uh, John Totaro's um, Falcone. He, um, I thought he had played it very differently. He played very low key. He played it very assured, like he he looked like a guy who was on top of everything. Um, yeah. Who was who was had was confident in everything, and yet was just cold blooded. Um, yeah. yeah, everyone did their job. Everyone did their job, and and. Everyone, and and it's not as I said. I thought we could have seen more from Alfred, from Gordon, from you, you know Selena Carl. But um, you're right. I mean, there's probably setting up for more stuff, and um, that's that's not the job. The problem of the actors, that, you know, it's probably look to tell you the truth. When I thought about my criticisms of this movie, a lot of it came down to my my false expectations more yeah. than it did. The film itself, because I was sitting there expecting I was going to get that head in the box moment. I thought we were going to see something mind blowing, um, and yet it sounds like this movie was committed to following through with that storyline. I know you know the storyline of the long, yeah. the long Halloween. Is you know, long, it, it, it borrows a little bit from the long Halloween and, and something else. Like it, it starts off because of the fact that it used Halloween as its starting, and it, it kind of made it like the holiday killer. But it wasn't a holiday killer; it's just a serial killer going after corrupt people so they kind of amalgamated year two and uh the long halloween kind of together uh right. it just kind of mixes it mix it so up. i so, guess if you're was, a, was no, it true to those do you think it, it do you think it kind of filled out those the vision of both of those to the likings of batman fans it, it did it did I, I i thought they did that one actually really really well um and, and honestly they kind of hit some stuff that was just like scene for scene things like uh, Carmine getting shot was was a scene, except for uh, um, or, or Selena Kyle going over Carmine and and wanting to shoot him. They got that, and then like Carmine getting shot. They just like in the long Halloween, they have like Falcone has another daughter who's like uh, like a big Bertha kind of chick, and she's kind of like a, she's not bad, but she's like super loyal to her, her father, so she wants to. Like, so there's elements that they took out, but I, I thought that right. they made it all work really well. So it it it, it held to, it, it held 
literally the amalgamation of both of them together with that added Dick Tracy-ness. And I think that was the other thing. I think that's why the good characters didn't look like they stood out so far, or at least the protagonists didn't look like they stood out. I think DC is starting to finally, 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 truly lean into, we're going to make our villains our stars. And yeah. the the people who had the most character were all the villains. Carmine Falcone, uh, Riddler, uh, you know, Edward Enigma, uh, uh, a Penguin. Like, he, they all had, like, a really standout characteristic yeah. that you typically would get from those side characters. And I think DC's finally learned, like, look, Joker did well. The Suicide Squad did well. Yep. People want us to show the baddies and then use the because the good guys are gonna be the good guys. Like you you have yeah, yeah, yeah. so much of a plot that you can go with them. But the villains, yep. oh, we can build around that. Yeah. Like they, they already announced yep. they're doing an Arkham Asylum show as a spin-off from this movie. Yeah, yeah. As well as uh some other uh side projects spinning off from this yeah. this universe. The big star for me of the whole movie, the, my favorite bit was the car. I <laughs> dug that car. I'm not a car person. I'm not a car person. But I love that car. That looked like something that you'd hear screaming around Burger King at 3 o'clock in the morning yes. back in the 80s. And I just and I love that car chase. It was just balls to the wall. Bang, bang, bang. Um and I have to admit, and it finished really well with that scene. We'd already seen it in the trailer, yeah. but it's a badass mm -hmm. scene of him walking upside down towards Penguin. That whole sequence, oh, that was my favorite part of the movie by a long way. Um, <laughs> that's not to say other bits weren't good, because I said everything else played its part. But that, but car, was my, that car was my MVP for this movie. <laughs> Just the way it roared, you know. <laughs> But like, oh. again, it, go, it goes back to what uh, George Reeves did so well with this movie was utilizing the darkness as a character to be able to create the intimidation because that silhouette of the uh, of the uh, Batmobile going against that red haze, going against traffic, mm. and then the you know cobble pots looking behind him like, come on, come on, you can't, uh -oh. why are you still going out here, psychopath? Like, and it felt like legitimately, I was like, yo, this does feel like a psychopath. Like bearing down on him, yeah. And I was like, "Yo, I feel you from I feel you from from Penguin's position." Like, yo, but the you. the big down point of that is he nails him, puts him, in, you know, he grabs the penguin, pushes him against the wall, and then says, "You're you're the you're the you know the rat with wings. You're the rat with wings." He goes, "No, I'm not." Oh, he's not. <laughs> I mean, I've shortened it, but it was like. All those cars you destroyed, all those trucks you rolled right. over on. Oh, no, okay, sorry. Yep, you no, you were the right target. Let's remind our friends to please click on the subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you know when we have new videos out. Subscribe! Subscribe! subscribe. Oh, die.